I've been lately watching a lot of videos on YouTube on how to start your YouTube channel, how to grow your audience from these uh, uh, big YouTube channels like Think Media or these big YouTubers like Peter McKinnon, Matty Hapoya and a lot others. And they more or less share the same types of experiences, you know, being consistent, uh, trying to look for trends and all that jazz. The thing is that I think they kind of forgot how it is to be a small YouTuber. And a lot of those strategies are great on paper, but it's not really how me and you being random Joes could easily achieve. And then they make it sound like it's super easy to just start on YouTube, post videos out there that you're gonna get famous soon and it's not really quite like that so me being a small youtuber with 368 uh, subscribers by now I think I'm, I'm in a good position to speak for the small youtubers community and try to show how it is actually to be a small youtuber what kind of struggles we have what kind of things we think about the future of the channel so that if you're thinking on starting your YouTube channel, this for sure is going to be very valuable for you. So just to give you guys a bit of a background, I started on YouTube in 2014, where I posted two videos about the city that I was living at that time, which was Belfast. And it was aimed to the Brazilian community that was looking for an exchange program uh, in Northern Ireland. Those videos were really raw and naturally they didn't do well on YouTube. In 2018, I took an amazing trip to Santiago de Chile and I recorded a bunch of B-rolls there, put them all together and tried to make a story and post it on my channel. The quality of the videos were bad because I had a, a Samsung Galaxy S4 at that time. But again, it was just for fun and I didn't put much effort on it, so couldn't expect that much. In 2019, I upgraded my phone to an Asus Zenfone 5 and I took a trip to Bulgaria with my girlfriend, record a bunch of B-rolls there, a lot of them actually, because we stayed two weeks in the country. And then I put them again all together and now I think the quality was much, much better. And it was more or less like at that time that I decided to put a little bit more effort into my YouTube channel. And from that video onwards up to now, I think I posted about 10 or 12 videos. And my channel has grown up to 368 followers. Let's talk strategies now. So my channel started with no strategy whatsoever. Yeah, as you can see, I still post some random videos there. One about how to make your CV online, another travel video, vlogs, informational videos, podcasting videos, everything. And one of the things that these big YouTubers that are giving tips on how to grow your audience always say is that you have to find your niche. And they say that as if it was super easy. It's just like one more thing that you should do in order to grow your audience faster. But in my personal experience, that is the hardest thing if you're a person like me who has not uh, any special skill to share with the world. What should I talk about? Should I talk about my life? Should I do like daily vlogs? But I don't think my life is especially interesting to anybody. Should I talk about my hobbies? I don't really have any hobbies to be honest. Uh, I just play the guitar, but I'm not even that great at playing the guitar. So what should I talk about? I want to have a channel, but I don't know what I will be talking about. And then they just say, so just start, just post whatever. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. As you can see, my channel has a lot of, a lot of random videos and I still have not found my niche. And it's been already three years, let's say. And they never say that this process of finding your niche could take up to three years. They try to picture that if you do everything correctly, in three years, you're gonna get famous on YouTube. There is this formula of success that you have to follow and it's always going to work. That's not how it is. Then I started working a little bit more on my thumbnails, on the titles, but at this point that I already have more or less an experience on how to make videos, what should I do? Should I look for trends and just post videos about things that people are looking for? Should I continue doing random videos? Should I stop and find my passion first and just then continue posting on YouTube. I don't know. And I'm pretty sure that most of you guys who are thinking on starting would have more or less the same struggles as me. Let's talk about equipment now. So as I said, I started my YouTube with a very old Galaxy S4 and then I upgraded to my Asus Zenfone 5 and currently I have a Canon M50 mirrorless camera and I've been seeing a lot of these guys saying that no you don't have to invest in expensive gear to start and so on and yes I believe that you don't need but if you want to grow you will need to invest in your channel so don't make the mistake that you think that 
just with your iPhone, as good as it is, you're gonna have great quality videos because that's not true. And a good laptop is also very important because my current laptop cannot handle the footage from this M50. It freezes all the time and it's a pain every time I need to edit videos. That's why I'll have to also upgrade my laptop, but of course not only because of my YouTube channel and I wanted to buy it anyways, but having a YouTube channel actually accelerated the process for me to upgrade. And this is now probably one of the things that they say and I completely agree, which is investing in a good audio equipment. So that means a good microphone. When I say good, it doesn't mean expensive. You can still buy a lapel one like the one that I'm using here for like 15 bucks and the quality of the audio is so much better that you would never believe. It was the first thing that I upgraded. You can even just plug on your phone and you already have a great audio quality. So I definitely recommend if you just started out, just really buy an external microphone because that makes a huge difference on the quality of your channel. Now let's talk about the advantages of being a small YouTuber. And the first one is of course, there is a lot less pressure. So if you're not posting videos every week or every month or whatever frequency you chose to, it's fine, you know, nobody's going to write you on your other social media platform saying like, well, hey, what's going on? What is happening that you're not posting? Nobody's going to do that, so that's fine. Despite me personally, I, I always struggle to control my anxiety when I'm not posting because uh, deep in my head, I know that I should be posting more often because consistency is one of the most important things if you wanna grow your YouTube. So being a small YouTuber uh, brings a lot less pressure and it's great in that matter. And the second thing that is really nice when you're a small YouTuber is that you get to interact with every single person that comments in your video. Uh, you can answer, answer all comments, you can answer even personal direct messages. You see people that, that regularly come to your channel to to watch your videos and that's really nice. And every single new comment that you get, every single new subscriber you get, it's so much fun. When you open the next day your YouTube studio app and then you see that you got one or two or three, when I get like 10 more subscribers a day, that is like, wow, today was a great day. So every single person matters a lot when you're small. Trade-offs now. So as I already mentioned, finding your niche is what I struggle the most in my channel. And that is what keeps me awake at night. If I cannot find my niche soon, I'm gonna get crazy, I'm, I'm not kidding. So if that means your channel has a lot of random videos and, and the YouTube algorithm cannot really find what is your channel about, and then it's hard for them to recommend to other people. And if the algorithm is not on your side, you're not gonna do well. In addition to that, you have a lot of self-doubt on whether you are good on YouTube or not, because you don't see the traction but you put all your effort, all your energy making these videos to please people and you don't know, you don't have a lot of feedback and then you don't know if you should continue, if you should radically change something. It, it's really hard to set a strategy when you don't have a feedback of what you are currently doing. And man, like a thousand subscribers, uh, which is one of the requisites for monetizing your channel, feels so far away. I, I try to make projections uh, based on the monthly new subscribers that I have. I make these projections to see how long it's gonna take for me to monetize my channel, but it just feels so far away. And let alone 10,000 or a hundred thousand subs. It just feels so real. And if you have an imposter syndrome like me that everything I make, I'm not really 100% satisfied with it. It just feels so far. So I don't know if I could actually pass to you guys uh, my feelings at this moment as being a small YouTuber. If you're really thinking of starting your own channel, just keep in mind that it's going to be 10 times harder than you think or a hundred times harder than what they say on those big YouTube channels. So really, you have to be very patient. You should keep your expectations the lowest you can, especially if you're going to do it without 
consistency and without uh, good equipment or if you're not really good at communication it's gonna take a lot longer than you expect and that's it for the video thanks a lot for watching if you liked it don't forget to give the thumbs up subscribe to my channel and help and this is going to help me a lot i really want to feel more the feedback from my community and if you guys have some suggestions so as i said i am kind of stuck i don't really know what kind of videos i should be doing if you have suggestions please just post here uh, under the comment section and it's gonna be amazing for me so thanks a lot and i'll see you on the next video goodbye